All right, so first of all, when we're looking at the problem, and this is the quiz sake, when you're looking at any of the stoichiometry problems, make sure that you're following exactly what I've asked you to do. So in this case, A says balance the equation. You need to make sure it's balanced because by balancing, you're giving some information about that balanced equation or that equation in particular. Uh, then part B says moles of the chemical that actually reacts. Part C says moles of any extra and then moles of just this one product, iron three oxide. And then in the meantime, you do have to identify limiting, limiting reactant. Although I mentioned that part E, realistically, you do need to know how to, what the limiting reactant is prior to even figuring out the, the actual product. So the first thing is, let me get my inking on here. First thing is I have to balance it. So if I put a four here, that gives me four iron. Then sulfur, I need to put four in front of my sulfur dioxide. I then have 14 oxygen. So I need to place a seven in front to make 14 oxygen. This is the first thing that needs to be done. So double check, triple check your work that this reaction is actually balanced. The next thing you're looking at is what I've given you. So Mrs. Salkson gave you this many moles of each of the reactant. If I gave it to you in grams instead of moles, your first step is not the stoichiometry. Your first step would be to convert your grams into moles. That would be the first step. However, I've jump started it and I placed the value in moles. So this is where we're able to then uh, go into the stoichiometry right away. Another thing I want to make note, since this is a learning tool, we're taking the quiz into the learning tool, is that if I were to only give you one of the reactants and asked you to solve for the product, there is no limiting reactant in that case. That's telling you that I'm giving you an unlimited amount without even stating that. So if I weren't going to give you two values of the reactant, you wouldn't have to start with this first step of identifying the limiting reactant. But in this case, I did give you two uh, reactant values. And so your first step, well, I'm going to make note of it here. So you want to make sure you convert into moles. If not in moles. However, they are moles, so we're okay. So the first step then is to determine the limiting reactant. And I told you we can just use LR for the limiting reactant symbol. So I'm going to bracket this off so it's focusing on just, you're just figuring out which one limits it here. So I'm going to set up my proportion and I'm going to use all my units in the proportion. So I've got 15.5 moles of FES. And I'm trying to figure out how many moles of oxygen. I'm going to set up the other equation. So this one, I've, I'm looking for moles of FES. And I've been given 17.9 moles of oxygen. Again, you're only doing this step to determine the limiting reactant. So that I'll set up the proportion. There we go. We need to make sure that the units are the same on the denominator and the numerator. So I'm going to write the units first before I put any values. And the reason I do this is so I don't make a mistake and put the wrong values on the wrong side of the line, right? on the wrong side of the proportion, basically. So you're looking now at your balanced equation. Remember that these values, these coefficients that we generically termed last unit, we know them as the number of moles. So if I were to verbally tell you about this equation, I could say you have four moles of iron sulfide and seven moles of oxygen yield two moles of your iron three oxide and four moles of sulfur dioxide. And so you could also use that vocabulary now that we know that. So we're using our mole to mole ratio from our balanced equation. So from the balanced equation, we have four moles of FES. 
and seven moles of oxygen. So I'd use the same setup, moles of FES and oxygen. At this point, I want to mention that it doesn't matter if you would have put 15.5 moles of FES on top or bottom, as long as your second portion of the, of the proportion is set up properly, that the units are the same. So I'll just highlight that to focus. You've got to make sure those units are the same. And this is why I write all of the unit on it. What I mean by all is I don't just write moles or I don't just write the value. I write moles of FES and moles of oxygen. So I don't make a mistake. So now calculating it, you just take in a proportion, you take that value, cross multiply and divide. So when you take 15.5 and multiply by seven, and then divide by four, you get 27.125 moles of oxygen. I'll do the same for the bottom portion, 17.9 times four divided by seven, and I get 10.228 moles of iron sulfide, okay. So I have my two values. Now I need to know how to determine your limiting reactant. Notice that Mrs. Silkson gave you 15.5 moles of iron sulfide and 17.9 moles of oxygen. The amount that I could produce from this equation is 27. So I have the amount available to be produced. I only, I'm only using 17.9 because that's what I've given you. However, if you look at the number, um, of your iron two sulfide, your iron two sulfide can only produce 10.228, but this is how much I provided. So there's gonna be an excess amount there because it's not enough. So at this point, we can determine then that oxygen is our limiting reactant. So I'm gonna make note of what you should be circling at this point. Do not circle the actual answer from your work. You wanna circle the actual value or the number or the atom, the equation molecule, and then label limiting reactant or LR. Some of you wrote the word limiting reactant as oxygen. That's perfect. That's fine too. All right, so the next part then says, okay, how much moles? I'm gonna scroll down a little bit here. I wanna make sure I'm labeling so Mrs. Sulkson doesn't mark off for my information. I'm putting myself into third person here moles, let's see, reacted. And then you have moles excess. You get a lot of scraggly marks here. And then the last part is moles produced. And I specifically only asked you about iron three oxide. So I want to make note of that so I don't go overboard and do both of them. In today's practice uh, for the work, you will be practicing both of the products. All right, so moles reacted. You had 10.228 moles of FES that reacted but you had the entire 17.90, is that the value? Make sure, 17.90 moles of oxygen reacted. So in excess, well, we used all of 17.90. So we have no excess of your oxygen. Your limiting reactant, you should never have any excess. It's not the case here. So my excess, I'm going to look at my value up here, 15.5 and then subtract my 228 moles. And then I get an excess of 5.272. And I'm gonna label that. So I know exactly everything's there. So, so there it is clearly labeled. So far, so good. And then we need the moles produced. So we're making our moles produced. We're gonna use the information from our balanced equation and our one that limits the reaction. So we can set up the proportion of what we know so far and what we're trying to find. We know there's 17.90 moles of oxygen. We're trying to find the moles of 
iron three oxide, which is rust. Then to do our stoichiometry, so it's what we know to what we're trying to find. The second part of the, of the stoichiometry proportion is always coming from the balanced equation. So we'll look up here and then I'll use a highlighter. Our balanced equation says, oh, I shouldn't have done the whole thing. That's fine. Seven oxygen to two iron three oxide. So I, I know my moles of oxygen must be on top because the proportion mathematically needs to be set up here. So I can put seven moles of oxygen on top and then I'll put two moles of my iron three oxide. Mathematically now I take that 17.9, multiply by two and divide by seven and I get an answer of 5.114 moles of iron three oxide. I've asked you to box in your final answer, which is the amount of moles that were produced. And that's the solution. I didn't ask you for sulfur uh, dioxide. I've only asked you for the moles of iron three oxide. So I'm going to go a l one step further before I stop recording right now, and then I'll answer some questions. Um, I'm going to go to the next step because this is great and this is good informative news. However, in the lab, you would not be able to measure this out in any way because we don't have a mole balance. So then we can do something called a conversion. So we're moving away from our stoichiometry and going back to our second day of unit six. So we're, we can convert moles to grams or vice versa using your periodic table, so put PT as periodic table, you get your molar mass. So we're going to review that right now. So if a question asks you how much, then that is talking about grams, if I don't actually state that. So if the science or chemistry problem says how much of a product, you're asking how many grams of a product is produced. So I'll start off with moles because this is a conversion. We do not use our balanced equation for conversions. We just use the periodic table. The multimole ratio comes only for stoichiometry. So here I have my moles of iron three oxide. I'm trying to figure it out in grams. Notice that I've placed all of my work, including the units in my proportion, so I don't make a mistake. So here is where I'm going to look up my periodic table and I'm going to calculate Fe2O3. So then I can take 16 times 3, take my iron times 2, and I can add it all together and I get 159.694 grams per one mole. Notice again, the big thing about proportions is that you need to make sure that your units are the same on the numerator and the denominator in order for the math to work out. So you have one mole and then you have 159.694. And remember, I'm trying to get you in the habit of using three decimal values for accuracy. So to do this math portion is the same way. The proportions mathematically, you multiply 5.114 times 159.694 and divide by one, which is just the same answer. And you get that you have 816.675 grams of iron three oxide, which is just rust. So you're able to now take this and measure it out in the lab because we do have a scale or a mass or a balance that we can measure that out with. Okay, I'm gonna pause my um, recording right now so that way we can ask any questions.